It's yet another time for MTN Nigeria's Capital Markets Day, a time when the MTN Nigeria team, investors and key stakeholders gather to look at growth opportunities in the Nigerian market. Hello and welcome to this special episode of Focus on Amakin Obake. In the next half hour, we'll bring you some key takeaways from the MTN Nigeria Capital Markets Day 2023. Given what the central bank, the current central bank is doing, I think we should take from this a very positive outlook for this country as, uh, from as early as the end of this year. Now, then we've got to all put our heads together and see how after stabilizing, you know, it's like a patient who's hemorrhaging, you've got to stop the hemorrhage first, and then you go through a process of recovery. So I think the central bank is taking this system to safe harbor by bringing in stability and then the real work begins, which is the structural change that we have to make to ensure that this does not happen in another 18 months, another 24 months. It's the 2023 edition of the MTN Nigeria Capital Market Day. In attendance are local and foreign investors who are here to engage high-level representatives of the Nigerian government on the country's macroeconomic reforms, as well as MTN Nigeria executives we will share a comprehensive overview of the company's progress against its key ambition 2025 growth indicators. MTN Nigeria CEO Carl Toriola sets the tone on what investors can expect from the two-day event. Doubtless, we're in turbulent times in Nigeria with economic challenges, but the entire world is facing the same. It's however, I believe that most of the challenges in the Nigerian economy are gradually getting behind us with strong and clear direction from the leadership of President Tinubu, His Excellency President Tinubu, which recognizes the role of the private sector and the digital economy moving the country forward. Over the next few days, we'll unpack our investment case and with the help of government representatives here, the policy direction of the government. It's a very busy time in the transition um, into the new administration and there are many many multifaceted meetings that are going on in many territories. I'm pretty sure a lot of the investors here will have a number of questions which you are looking to get us to shed some light on. And some of these may be, what is the growth outlook and the potential for MT9 Nigeria as a business? What is the impact of devaluation on our business? How are we managing our TACO portfolio? How far down the growth journey of data are we and how much further do we have to go? Is there a significant opportunity on Own the Home and Fiber? What is our capital structure? How strong is our competitive position? Can our digital business scale? How is our enterprise business doing? And probably what most of you are very keen about, where are we on our fintech story and trajectory? And what do we have to look forward to? I hope you will have an enjoyable and enlightening experience for all of us. And most of these questions will be answered by the end of the two days. For a company like MTN, one of Africa's largest mobile network operators with nearly 300 million customers in 19 markets across Africa and the Middle East, its presence and operation in Nigeria are pivotal to its overall growth target. Hence, building investor confidence in the Nigerian market remains crucial. Nigeria remains Africa's best kept secret. According to the government that has come into office, and I think the signal we've seen in the last um, um, May through to date tells a story of where a government wants to go. So currently we're dealing with what we at the NESG call a willing reformer government. Um, and there are some characteristics of a willing reformer. Some willingness to take bold, tough reforms, commitment to steady the course, and then a deep-seated dedication to getting the hard work done. And we're seeing all those things with this particular reformer. The government of the day within the Renewed Hope Agenda projects that it will move the Nigerian economy to a $1 trillion economy by 2026. 
with the targets of getting to $3 trillion economy by 2025, and then by and possibly stretching it to $4 trillion. The president has asked, why not $4 trillion by 2035? This is an important signal. Whilst, um, of course, Nigerians ask the question, well, it's another good target, right? But targets are important when you're dealing with driving the economic system to drive economic benefits. So where could this type of growth come from? Um, it could come from a lot of places, but any sector that could potentially drive growth is dealing with a basic characteristic of the Nigerian experience. We critically need investment capital, but we remain capital deficient as a country. The opportunities that will shape such a GDP growth requires that we see a driving of investment opportunities like the ones MTN is presenting here in the next two days, and that we see from governments signaling that investments um, will be welcome. Of course, hearing from the government is also a strong assurance to the MTN Nigeria investors. For most of these uh, companies, this is their biggest market in the world, right? It shows the potentials of our market. It also shows that business is possible in this market. You know, investors are scared of coming, but these companies have been in Nigeria for, for years. They've done absolutely well. Of course, there are issues here and there that we all need to manage together. But it's a testament to the fact that our government is pro-business and we can actually manage these issues and challenges together. So, so it's an indication and, and a strong message for other investors who want to come to Nigeria. To come, not just come with hoping that once the money is in, gains out, but when they come and they be part of the society, that we can build things together, the society will benefit and they will also take significant gains out of it. The capital market itself is so critical to the future that we see for Nigeria. Both the public sector and the private sector need the capital market to be able to invest, without which there can be no growth. Um, now, to be able to bring that confidence back, it's a combination of interventions and, and measures. On one hand, um, FX is a critical part. Uh, you need to be able to bring in your money freely, but more importantly, be able to take it out when you need to, in a way that is predictable. Uh, and nobody is saying that you should guarantee them an exchange rate within which to take it back, right? So, investors are used to dealing with the fact that exchange rate moves. What they are not comfortable with is to have two markets where there's so much divergence in rates and there's uncertainty as to what you can get out and, and, and how you, you do that. So that's been addressed uh, principally by the monetary authorities, the central bank. But also this time around, we're doing uh, complementary fiscal measures to support the interventions of the central bank to gain some stability in the foreign exchange market and more importantly to attract liquidity. Uh, more broadly, when it comes to fiscal policies for the capital market, uh, Mr. President has been very clear. We do not want to tax investment. We do not want to tax capital. We do not want to tax production. We are not taxing seed. We want to tax fruit. How positive are these assurances to the MTN team and its investors in line with its growth target? We're very positive around the structural reforms uh, from President Tinubu. We spoke yesterday about, you know, the the work that's been done, uh, you know, really around, um, you know, dealing, uh, you know, particularly uh, around monetary policy and fiscal policy. Um, and as part of that, I think on the fiscal side, um, what we took to heart today has been the discussion that there is a focus on simplifying the tax code. I think a simplification of the tax code makes uh, business easier. It makes it more predictable to bring on investment. And um, if, for example, the Finance Act is something that is implemented in a way that there is no kind of frequent changes to it, it actually inspires more confidence. So we took a lot of confidence today, uh, really around the marks, uh, around the direction of uh, tax policy uh, to simplify you know, businesses. Specific to the digital economy, it was further heartening to hear the comments that really around trying to have a tax code and tax policies that are about crowding in, uh, you know, digital investment. So very, very positive this morning. I mean, if you look at smartphone penetration in Nigeria, 53% smartphone penetration. Um, advanced markets are in the 90s. 
And so you can still see a long runway for growth for data. I think the next opportunity you should see MTN tackle with Vega in Nigeria is really about um, ensuring that we're able to serve Nigerians in the home. Right now, the journey has all been largely wireless. As you and I move from place A to B, you need to stay connected. But the next uh, revolution that is coming in is really about revolution at the home. How much data is consumed at the home and how well are we arranged as MTN Nigeria to be based able to capture that. And that's, we're talking about what do we need to do around fixed wireless access. We've got uh, 100 megahertz or 3500 spectrum. So that's, we're going to deploy that quite a bit towards uh, you know, owning the home strategy. And then we're going to work towards uh, fiberizing um, you know, our own network and getting uh, FTTH uh, fiber to the home. We believe strongly in the uh, Nigerian investment case, as you could see from our Q3 results. Um, despite the strong headwinds, we're still able to navigate and uh, still ended up having a profit uh, after tax. So the capital market is an opportunity to bring investors together. Uh, to interact with the policymakers, to let them hear firsthand from the government and see how they are you know, putting policies and frameworks in place uh, with the renewed hope agenda of the current administration. M10 has always been a poster child of the Nigerian investment. Uh, from the speakers, you heard about when the government puts in the right policies in place, removes the bottlenecks, encourages uh, FDIs, then the economy will thrive and you could see with the telecoms that um, MTN has successfully led the leapfrogging of um, the industry such that it contributes about 16% of the GDP. Uh, as far as retail investors are concerned, one of the things that you find is that today, one of the most call it dispersely held stock by retail investors is MTN. Uh, and there are two reasons for this. One is, of course, the brand itself is a very well known, very well recognized brand by retail investors. And then number two, back to what I spoke about innovation. When we did the secondary follow-on for MTN, we applied some technology to that, which then made it easier to democratize you know, the shareholding of MTN. So a day like this that gives retail investors an opportunity to hear more of the story, uh, that gives institutional investors, both local and foreign, also an opportunity to hear more of the story, to stay close to the story. All of that deepens, I think, the interactions and the activities in MTN, and that should also support the retail uh, activity on the exchange. So, I mean, we did just phase one of the sell down of MTN Group shares. And uh, it was always very clear that MTN wanted to sell down their shares to, down to 65% um, with a primary focus on retail investors. Why? Um, because the value creation that MTN experiences, we want to share it with as many Nigerians as possible. Um, we did the offer. Um, it was the first digital offer. I suspect that all offers going forward will be digital. And I know for sure any future MTN offers will be digital. Um, that makes it easy. Um, that makes it um, quick. And that allows anybody um, to subscribe and participate in the shareholding. It's a confirmation of where they're coming from. And that's why I talked about for long-term investors. Uh, that could also be one of the decisions, one of the reasons they will take the decision they will take uh, in staying long. Uh, but for competition, uh, once you're a big boy, uh, like you're a big team, uh, oh, you are the you know, go Rangers or uh, shooting stars, every other small player wants to make sure that they take you and take you out. So competition will be expected. But given the, the amount of investment in human capital, I, I don't see them uh, falling too far from target. MTN Nigeria has a great track record of delivery from our operational perspective. We appreciate there are there, ha there have been concerns on the macro side, but we're very happy to hear and confident of some of the changes that have taken place over the last six months with the recent administration. And all of the things that we've heard in the conference over the last 48 hours leave us even more enthused and confident that the right um, concerns are being heard and the government is very keen to engage and encourage further investment and they are very serious about taking the necessary steps to help foreign investors to come in and to go, uh, to go out in a smooth manner. MTN is here to stay and here to develop the capital markets. It's one of the most active equity uh, listings on the Nigerian stock exchange. It's also in the bond markets as well as commercial paper markets. And what MTN has done over the course of today is ensure that the regulators, the investors, partners like ourselves at Renaissance Capital all come together to understand the story in a very clear way. I think one thing to also state is that 
at this event, even though it is a domestic event, there are a plethora of international investors who are also looking to understand that story and also understand the microeconomic context of Nigeria and a large entity such as MTN within it. All very positive. With your permission on this USSD launch that we are doing with MTN today. In a bid to deepen capital markets penetration, the Nigerian Exchange, in partnership with MTN Nigeria, launched the USSD code star 5474 hash. It's about digitizing access to the capital markets. It's about allowing the common man on the streets with two, three steps on his mobile phone to subscribe and to offers to buy shares, to trade, to sell shares, to um, find out what's happening in the market, who's trading, what, who's rising, who's falling, um, who has the most volumes of trade, etc. Makes it very, very easy. Before you'd have to fill forms, go through cycles of this, that. Now on your mobile phone, you can execute everything in two minutes. Uh, this is also one way that the exchange is trying to address this subject of investor education, this subject of democratizing finance, this subject about transformation digitally of our capital markets. So today we're pleased to announce that, you know, if you dial star 5474 hash on your phone, you would have a bouquet of options available to you. You can see the closing price, the opening price of any security that's listed on the exchange. You can get a gateway to opening a brokerage account in our capital markets and a whole host of other information. What we hope is that this is the first step to using a tool like this to actually invest in the capital markets. Why can't you dial a short code uh, and use that as a means to invest in a primary market transaction as an example? These are things that we think will happen, but at least we announced today the very first step of this, which is access to data, access to information and a gateway to investing. MTN says sustainability is at the heart of its operations and targets. The event was also an avenue for the telecoms giants and regulators to state their positions in reducing the global carbon footprint. The environmental impact, the social impact and the governance. What is the, the um, impact of the environment on your company? And what is the impact that your own company has on the environment? What is the impact of society on your company? What, was, what, what is your impact on society? And how are you governing your company? Because you're taking people's money. And so we want to ensure that you're using the money right. All of those things have a long-term impact on the company in the sense that they are, if they're not taken into consideration, they are risks that the company has to dimension and deal with. What do you do with risks? You dimension them, you mitigate them, you eliminate the one that you can eliminate. You are a company, you are a bottling company, you need water. Everybody knows that water sources are drying up around the world. If I'm an investor in your company, it's a risk and I want to know what you are doing to ensure that my investment is not going to go off in the air because there's no water suddenly. ESG at the core essentially means, we're saying that, look, sustainability is not a nice to have. It's a need to have. It's, it should be core to everything we do. And when you look at sustainability from that sense, if you look at the first pillar, environment, we committed to reducing our contribution to greenhouse emissions to zero by 2040. So we have a clear target. And last year, I think, um, looking at what we do ourselves, scope one, from a scope one point of view, we achieved maybe 25% uh, of our target. Now, from what our vendors are doing, uh, we're pushing. What we've decided to do is everybody that is working with us now, when we're going into a contract with you, if your activities would contribute to increasing greenhouse emissions, we insert it in the contract. Okay, we negotiate with you, find out what you're capable of doing, and we insert it in the contract to make sure that you are working with us to achieve that first leg. When you look at the social, it basically speaks to how we provide real value. Because I, I say this often, okay? Uh, in MTN, we think what we do, providing communications, enabling people to talk to their loved ones, to do business through our services, is actually like a vocation. Uh, it was said recently that we've gotten to where sometimes people take a decision to have their communication on rather than buy food. That's how integral. So from that perspective, we are trying to make sure we provide world-in-class, first-in-class services, as good as you can find anywhere in the world. We are trying to make sure that we embed ourselves and we contribute to the general ecosystem, 
providing real value, whether it's our vendors, whether it's our partners or our customers. The Capital Markets Day also included a visit to the popular Wuse market in the Federal Capital Territory in Abuja. So ladies and gentlemen, the Momo journey um, started May last year. Uh, just around the time we started, we, we had to deal with some uh, issues. Uh, so that, that meant that we had to focus a lot more uh, addressing governance uh, and then, you know, putting in uh, processes that would support the kind of uh, business acceleration that we want. And so we didn't quite focus on commercial activity uh, most part of last year. Uh, but now having built the governance uh, structure and process, we are now, you know, we are aligned to drive the commercial activity. And that's why in my presentation, I highlighted that we have now commenced a two year booster plan, uh, which will help us accelerate, you know, the service. Uh, as at the close of uh, the last reporting period, uh, we had uh, 3.6 million uh, active uh, customers. And these are customers who have done at least one transaction in 30 days. And out of that, we have also registered 27 uh, million uh, customers, but um, on the activity side, 3.6 on a 30 day cycle. So the others have wallets, they don't do transaction on a regular basis uh, for that matter. So the focus now is how to incentivize those customers to also continuously now use their wallet to expand. And part of it is what we have put into the booster plan. Um, we have improved on our distribution efficiency that will allow us to make sure that our teams who are in the field are focusing on the right activities. They are educating customers, they are making sure customers have access to the service, they understand the service and they know how to transact. Another thing, and it came out as one of the questions, was our app, app uh, channel. Even though USSD serves as well and we are able to reach our customer base using the USSD, there is still a good chunk of customers who are app customers uh, and, and they want to experience the service on the app. And you, you realize that that customer was saying that the experience hasn't been too good. We picked those feedback and we've gone ahead to, you know, spend time to redesign and develop a new app, which will become available uh, in the market in the coming uh, days, uh, or if not uh, weeks. And that will give us the kind of experience we believe customers, you know, will like in using the, the, the wallet, using their app. Now back to the capital markets, I mean, it's mainly an MTN activity, but as a subsidiary, we also stand to benefit because if you listen to the questions, some of the investors are here, but they also have interest in how the Momo business is doing. And so we believe that selling the Momo story is also important to these discussions because it adds to the interest levels. And we believe that we also begin to put investor interest in our uh, business as well. And we could now begin to get some investment interest. And I'm sure part of it is what culminated in this whole conversation ongoing with MasterCard. So we, we, we believe that is, it's been a useful uh, one and a half days uh, or two days. Uh, and, and we feel that the opportunity to sell the Momo story uh, was a good platform for today. With its ambition 2025 strategy, MTN Nigeria plans to take advantage of the emerging opportunities in the Nigerian digital economy through the provision of broadband and data services. But that's all we can take on this episode of Focus On. Thank you for watching. I'm Akinyo Bakeye. Bye for now.